don't look as you know done up as church they probably sit on their pajamas look it's okay it is all <laughs> we're right. okay with that it's time for celebrations, celebrations. Okay, so over lockdown we've had some great celebrations happening and this week it's been a massive week for celebrations. <laughs> Zach Douglas has had a birthday. Happy birthday so, Zach! So Zach, happy birthday, you deserve two chocolate fish. Well done Zach, hope you had a lovely day in lockdown. I hope you got some real McDonald's this time. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah their drive through was yeah. cute but... Not real. Yeah, not real. Um, second celebration we have is Grant and Odette, one close to home. Um, they're 29 years married this well week. Done, so guys. that's absolutely amazing. Well done, Grant. I have and, and well Odette. Done, Odette will I have had the um, privilege of watching that marriage right up close and personal. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. They're more in love than they've ever been. So that is lovely. Well, congratulations to you two. And next year's a big one. It is. So I hope I get an invite to that party. <laughs> um, and another one. This one is really exciting because Nathan and Jess are pregnant. Um, so congratulations. I'm very excited as well to be an aunt again. I mean, you know, honorary aunt. <laughs> and the final celebration we have is one that's close to my heart. I want to give a chocolate fish to all of those children out there who have been learning on the internet or by distance. Hey, well done kids, that is an absolutely massive feat. You're three weeks in, or maybe four weeks now, in, um, uh, no, three weeks, um, in distance learning. So well done kids, awesome work, but also we need to give a chocolate fish to those parents who are helping those kids the do real, their distance The real learning. MVPs. Yeah, well done parents, I'm sure you're doing a great job. And you know what, if you're not, just try and keep everyone happy. Yeah. Just have right. a lovely, happy house and just have fun. That's all that Get matters. Get some fresh air. Get some fresh air. So yeah, I think um, that's all the celebrations. Yeah, I think, I think people have probably had enough of us. If you have a celebration that you would like to share with us for next week, then just comment on the Facebook or let um, Nathan know um, so we can yeah, celebrate you. Or if you want to dob in a friend who needs a bit of a celebration or like a, um, they've been doing something really amazing during lockdown, then just let us know because we'd love to celebrate them. Cool. Awesome. Hey, we're going to get into some more celebrating. We're going to celebrate God and his good, goodness this morning. So if you'd like to join us, feel free to stand in your homes, in your lounge room, or wherever, wherever you are. Um, but we're going to do, get into some praise and worship this morning. Thanks for being with us. Psalm 34, verse 1 through to 10. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. 
glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come on, church, let's worship now.
Good morning, Church. Well, it's really great to be here, and I've been asked to uh, speak with you this morning about uh, a little passage in John chapter 21. It's that story where uh, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? And Peter responded, yes, yes, Lord, you know I do. It's three times that uh, Peter actually uh, got asked that question. The third time he said, Lord, uh, he was a little bit annoyed. And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. It's interesting to note that before this dialogue between Peter and Jesus started, that uh, the guys had just been hovering around. They had nothing to do. They, uh, Jesus was not no, no longer with them. And uh, Peter got a bit frustrated. And he said, oh, I want to go fishing. And the other guy said, yeah, we'll come with you. So the seven of them in all, in fact, got into a boat and went out fishing for the night. And the Bible tells us there and earlier on in John 21 that they caught nothing. A bit like some of us when we go out fishing. But anyway, uh, they did, uh, after Jesus told them, have you guys caught anything? He yelled out from the beach, have you guys caught anything? And they said, no, nothing. They said, well, why don't you try throwing your net out on the other side, on the right-hand side, the starboard side? And they did that and they got a big haul of fish. It's interesting to note that uh, these guys telling the story, uh, typical blokes, they said they were large fish. And then they give the number, 157. Uh, I don't know if the uh, Ministry of Ag would have, uh, or Fisheries would have liked that, um, that many fish between s seven people. But anyway, that's what happened. That was the story. And they came ashore dragging this net full of fish. And Jesus said, you guys haven't had any breakfast, have you? Would you like some breakfast? And he had a fire going and cooked them a meal. And they were sitting there after their meal, uh, relaxing a little bit. And then Jesus started this dialogue and asked Peter, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? And perhaps it was a little bit like saying, well, Peter, do you love me more than your mates, your fishing mates? Do you love me more than going out and catching fish and uh, sitting on the beach here eating a meal? Do you love me more than this? All these things. And anyway, I want to read this uh, passage now in verse 18 of John 21, where Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this, to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. And that's what Peter did. He followed Jesus for the rest of his life. And church history tells us that one day he actually uh, was crucified. And when it came to being crucified, like his master had been crucified, he said, I don't want to be crucified in an upright position. I don't want to have it the same as Jesus. And, I, and he asked them to crucify him upside down. Peter followed Jesus even unto death, a martyr's death. But you know, it was three and a half years before that, when Jesus walking along the Sea of Galilee, and Peter was there with his friend James, and Jesus commanded him, Peter, come and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And that's what he did along with 11 others. They followed Jesus for three and a half years, physically followed him around. And so perhaps that wasn't too hard just to follow because there was someone to follow. But uh, things changed. And here they were now after the resurrection. There's 40 days between then and the ascension. Jesus had only appeared to the disciples three times. Things had changed. And here Jesus is asking Peter, to follow him and what he was really saying is hey Peter there's going to be a change here there's a different way and the different way was that uh, as Jesus said I'm not going to leave you as orphans but uh, I'm going to come to you and be with you by my spirit we've been through uh, a 40-day period of lockdown and it's been a change but we've still been following Jesus haven't we I hope you have that's what we've been doing Jesus asked Peter these three times. Why, why, why three times? I believe it was because he needed to have a loving relationship with Jesus. 
or else he wouldn't be able to follow. And he said, if you love me, you'll also love my flock. You'll feed my lambs, you'll care for my sheep. And here we have the, uh, the account in Luke, Luke's um, gospel, that uh, the night that Jesus was betrayed, the shepherd was struck and the sheep were scattered. But Peter, it says, followed at a distance. And we know that there was a distance that came between him and Jesus that night as he warmed his hands around the fire of the world, as it were, and uh, he denied Jesus. We've got to be careful that uh, we don't let things come between us and Jesus. A distance come in there, and we too could be in danger of denying Jesus. We need that relationship, that loving relationship. We need, need to maintain that so that uh, we stay close to Jesus. You know that great Psalm of David, Psalm 23, we all know it so well. David didn't say, the Lord is a great shepherd. He was more personal, wasn't he? He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And as we read through that Psalm, we see that there's uh, valleys of death. We see that there's uh, evils along the way. But um, at the end, we've got this beautiful provision. It's, it speaks about, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then also this great future and a hope, this great promise, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And isn't that a blessing to know that the presence of God will never be taken away from us in this life or in the next. Well, it was interesting what Jesus didn't ask of Peter. He didn't say to Peter, Peter, I want you to go out to heal the sick. I want you to go out and preach to millions. I want you to go out there and raise the dead. No, he didn't. He just said, Peter, I want you to care for my sheep. I want you to lovingly care for them and feed them. And yet, what happened? We know that uh, it's recorded there in the book of Acts that uh, Peter went out and even as he walked down the street, they would bring the sick out onto the street. And Peter's shadow would just um, come across them as they lay there and they were healed instantly. What an amazing thing to happen. He was invited to a dead woman's home. She died the day before and they rushed him there and said, come and, come and pray for her and he knelt down beside her bed, her deathbed and prayed and she sat up and he took her by the hand and lifted her up. She was raised from the dead. Another occasion, he went to the home of uh, Cornelius, the Roman centurion. And what happened there was a whole lot of people had gathered and Peter preached the gospel to them, explained what had happened, and how Jesus had risen from the dead, who is now Saviour and Lord of all, to those that believed. And what happened is all those people that were gathered there responded. They were all saved not only saved but they were filled with the Spirit, not only filled with the Spirit, they all spoke in tongues and they were water baptized later that same day. It must have been an amazing time. This was the first time that Gentiles had heard the gospel and responded. These were the first Gentile believers. So you may want a signs following ministry just like Peter had and think, man, that would be great. But uh, where does it come from? The thing is we've got to do what Peter was asked to do by Jesus to love and to care for people. And out of that service will come real Pentecostal Holy Spirit ministry. So, you know, during this time of lockdown, we've been learning to be led by the Spirit. I hope we have, so that we keep following Jesus. It may be different for a while, but we need to stay close to Jesus at this time. We're not just sure when we're gonna be able to all gather and meet together again. But just remember those words, what Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. We want to be called followers of Jesus, don't we? I'd like to pray now. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you sent Jesus. Jesus, I thank you that you came. And Holy Spirit, we just pray that you'll continue to lead us and guide us and make Jesus real to each one of us. Lord, help us to Stay close to you at this time. Lord, help us to be people that follow Jesus, not just for a short time, but all the days of our life. And Lord, we thank you 
that one day we shall dwell in your house forever. So Lord, bless your people at this time. Watch over each, each one, each family member, Lord. We commit ourselves into your care at this time. Amen. God bless you all. Hey there, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I just want to give a big shout out to Weston. Thank you for preparing that sermon, delivering that from your home. Uh, it's super cool. Thank you so much. Also, just our team that's uh, helped to, to bring this all together here today. Um, you guys are awesome. Top job. High fives all around. And uh, hey, look, I'm looking forward to next week. As, as the weeks roll on, um, our different things in our calendar just keep coming up. And, and next week is Mother's Day. So we've got a special treat. We've got Kathy Irvine's going to be preaching. So woohoo, looking forward to that. So that's us for another week. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.